Hello and welcome to The Print. This is Akanksha Mishra and you're watching Scientifix where I will be taking you through this week's top science news from across the globe. For our first story, researchers from Brazil found that using artificial sweeteners like aspartame or saccharin is linked to faster cognitive decline. A study published in the American Academy of Neurology's journal looked at 12,772 adults with an average age of 52 for 8 years to study the effect of artificial sweeteners on brain health. The study found that people who consumed the most artificial sweeteners experienced 62% faster cognitive decline as compared to those who consumed the least. Cognitive decline in this case refers to slowing down of thinking and memory skills. A 62% decline is roughly equal to 1.6 years of extra brain aging. Interestingly, they found this link only in people under 60 years of age. And they also found that it was strongly associated with people who had diabetes. However, Correlation is not causation and the authors were quick to point out that they have not directly established that the sweeteners are causing this decline. They have just established a link. The Brazilian health ministry supported the study and the authors did say that there needs to be more research to look at other sugar alternatives like honey and maple syrup also. Next up, have you ever seen a rectangular shaped telescope? You soon might because scientists say that it will be the best way to find life on other planets. A paper by US-based astrophysicist suggests that a unique rectangular shaped telescope would be the best way to look at possible habitable planets in our solar system. Let's back up a little to understand this. When scientists look for habitable planets near us, what they are essentially doing is looking for planets that have the same conditions as Earth. So they're about medium sized and near enough to a star like the sun, but not so near that they'll get too hot for life. But the reason it's difficult to identify planets like that is that stars like the sun emit so much more light, almost a billion times more than the earth, that we often get confused between the light from the planet and that from the sun. The common telescope shape that we know and use is circular. They have circular mirrors and circular lenses. But to be powerful enough to distinguish between the light from planets and stars, they need to be much larger and they need to have much better resolution. It's difficult to handle large circular mirrors and lenses. So now scientists suggest that we use a rectangular mirror instead to accommodate both the size and the resolution requirement of powerful telescopes. Not only are they easier to build and launch, Rectangular telescopes would also have a higher aspect ratio so that we can see a lot more of the sky at once. And they can be combined with light blocking techniques like coronographs to better capture the signs from exoplanets that could have life. Next up, a group of scientists from the University of Zurich is using genes to understand how languages were shared and developed across human history. It's a known fact that as different groups of humans met and interacted with each other, their languages assimilated and had similarities. So recent examples would be words like pajama, bungalow, chutney or loot, which are originally Hindi words becoming common words in English because of interaction between Indians and British during colonization. But did you know that this history stretches way back even before written records of language existed. For example, a few African languages like Khoisan and Bantu use click sounds in communication, even though they are from quite distant regions in Africa. This is because at some point these groups intermingled and borrowed from one another. To clearly identify and trace how languages spread as humans interact, the team from Zurich used genes from over 4,700 individuals across 558 populations with two global linguistic databases, which covers grammar, sounds, and vocabulary. They found that there were more than 125 cases of genetic contact around the world, and they found that these encounters increased the likelihood of linguistic similarities between the groups by 4 to 9%, even between unrelated languages. Finally, scientists from Hong Kong have developed a special kind of bacteria that can turn fluorescent when it comes in contact with microplastics in water. 
microplastics are minute particles of plastic that can get anywhere from the soil, the ocean to even the air and then permeate into living beings through it. Usually the process to identify microplastics from the water is to use infrared or Raman spectroscopy which are based on light sensors. These are accurate enough methods but they are very time taking. And so what the Hong Kong scientists have decided to do is create a living biosensor to detect microplastics. They used a special bacteria which is called Pseudomonas aeruginosa which has a natural tendency to attach to plastic. But they genetically engineer this bacteria so that one gene switches on when it encounters plastic and another gene makes it emit green fluorescent protein when that happens. So as a result, when the bacteria touch the microplastics, they light up. The scientists even tried this in actual ocean water and they were able to detect that for every 1 million parts of water, there were 100 parts of microplastics in that sample. According to the paper, this invention could change how environmental health screening is done. That's all we have for you today. Thank you for tuning into the print.